Jumped out of the second floor of a record store with a treacherous four cassette and a cassette recorder in Ecuador with Edward Norton. Hey, what's going on, guys? Purple Dank here. I'm going to do a, a review for you guys on the RX 480. Um, I've had the card for almost two months now, and I'm going to let you guys know my experience. All right, I'm going to start you guys off with there's um there's two essentially two models of the rx480 there's a four gigabyte and eight gigabyte card there the four gigabyte cards 200 the eight gigabyte is 240 so with that being said i can start you with the specs the rx480 has 5.5 teraflops its polaris 10 chip has two 2304 cores 144 texture units 32 ropS Whatever that means. 5.7 billion transistors. The um, it has 1266 megahertz for the core clock and 2000 megahertz for the memory core clock. <clears throat> um, like I said earlier, it either has an 8 gigabyte DDR5 VRAM or 4 gigabyte. 256 gigabyte memory bus. It's 150 watts. <clears throat> Most of them will the the reference card only comes with a six pin PCIe power connector. I have, me personally, I have the reference card, the blower fan edition. It has three display ports, 1.4s, and one HDMI 2.0. Like I've, I've seen cards with eight pins, eight, eight pin PCIe connectors, but it's not really necessary. They just, they added the extra pins for a stable more better overclock but with max voltage I can get a stable overclock of 1340 megahertz core clock 2175 memory clock with that being said I do not recommend overclocking because it shortens the life of your card adding all the extra voltage and stuff shortens the lifespan of your card but I've been I've been gaming and recording with this card for like I said a couple months it's very capable of gaming ultra settings 1080p like a few games I played I had to tweak the settings to get 60 frames it's very capable of triple-a titles like gta 5 and witcher 3 1080p 60 vr is also possible it's a great vr budget card it's good for 1080p gaming it's significantly cooler than the 300 series cards the radeon r9 300 series cards the rx 480 fluctuates between 50 60 degrees celsius on full load due to, due to lower temp it makes it not as loud so to say because the fans it's not in there blowing like a blow dryer trying to work hard and keep the car cool like the card i say the card was originally designed for quote unquote entry level 1440p gaming because i recently bought a 1440p monitor and i have been experimenting with the settings in my games and i'm still able to play mid to max settings in 1440p and get get my 60 frames which is absolutely amazing for the $240 price tag. Like, if you plan on starting a build with the RX 480, highly recommend it. If you're upgrading from entry-level cards like 750Ti or upgrading from old Radeon cards, the R7s or the old GTs, the old NVIDIA cards, I'd say do it, do it. But if you have like an R9 300 series card or the GTX 900 series card I suggest sticking with the one you have for a little bit longer because like it's not that much of an upgrade frame rate wise but like, if you're trying to build your own max settings council killer for 500 bucks for its price the RX 480 would be my su first suggestion like literally the 480 is a beast it is a beast for the price Plus, it takes advantage of the DirectX 12 gaming, which the new NVIDIA cards, they didn't take advantage of it. Like, there's there's so many advantages that DirectX 12 has over DirectX 11. I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling for you guys. Anyways, do I recommend the RX 480? Hell yeah. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10 in budget cards, give it a 9. I recommend it. Well, guys, that's about all I have for you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Peace, deuces, later. I'm out this bitch.